Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to draw a raspberry on toned gray watercolor paper using koi -Noor pencils. These are the regular colored pencils. You can follow along in whatever brand you have. I'm starting off with a basic oval drawn in a red color pencil, and now I'm taking a green, it's about a sap green color, to draw the leaves at the top of the uh, the raspberry. You can look through seed catalogs, or you can maybe find a raspberry on your property if they're in season, and sketch from that if you like. I would recommend a magnifying glass if you're doing that, or find a photo online and you can zoom right into it. That is probably the best way to go, because then you can see details a little bit better. Now you're going to notice that the little sections of the fruit kind of go across in um, in rows and columns and try to find a pattern to follow you'll notice they're kind of um, uh, they're kind of roundish squares sometimes they have points and indents uh, points on the top and indents on the bottom you really just want to look and observe from your reference photo zoom in see the detail that you can see and go from there now with a white pencil I just went in and kind of um, almost pressed into the paper to save the highlights the white pencil in this koi nor set is not very very strong so I wanted to kind of put that down first to kind of secure my whites where I want them I decided to try this drawing when um, I picked up these pencils they weren't very expensive they were under $25 for a set of 24 and um, I thought they'd be kind of fun because I had a few viewers ask me about them and um, ask if I would review them and when I saw them in a local store I decided to grab a set I'm going in with this kind of Bordeaux burgundy color and I'm adding my shadows. After getting my, my whites in there, my highlights, I like to go in with my darkest value. I just find it's a little bit easier to do that. Now I'm not going in with black. Um, I usually will save that till a little bit later because I find that the blacks can be a little strong and um, you can't, it's hard to come back from black. So I go in with the burgundy and um, knowing that I can layer over black if I need to. Now something I would recommend with this pencil set, and I do have a full review on my YouTube channel if you want to check it out. Um, one thing I'd recommend is that you pick up a white and a black from Prismacolor because those softer pencils just really pack a punch and they're so opaque and so strong that they will layer over pretty much any other traditional wax or oil-based pencil brand. Now there's a little um, a little controversy whether these pencils are oil-based or wax-based. I think they've changed their formula. Um, on Blick they call these a dry colored pencil and they definitely do feel dry and I think older versions felt a little slicker so if you have an older version of this you can definitely follow along just be aware that if you order replacement pencils or if you get a new set that they're gonna feel drier than the previous ones they kind of feel like the Derwent Studio or the Soho pencils if you're familiar with either either of them now um, I am layering up different greens I went in with a kind of a dark hunter green to get some shadows um, I can go in there with black if I need to darken them more uh, I layered up some sap green for those kind of um, brighter uh, kind of fresher leaf colors and uh, basically just took my time and layered up color. I'm not pressing firmly here. Now I did speed this up quite a bit obviously but I am using very little pressure and just a very gentle coloring here. The watercolor paper that I'm working on, this very very light gray watercolor pen paper, does help take some of the um, pencil off or pigment off the pencil because it's got a little bit of tooth. So if you find you can't get dark enough colors, uh, try using a paper that's a little bit rougher and it will grab more pencil. Uh, one, pen one paper that takes a lot of pencil that will really give you saturated results is sanded pastel paper, but it will go through, you'll go through your pencils and need to sharpen them a lot faster. So just keep that in mind. When you're putting more pigment down, your pencils are going to wear down faster. I did find these pencils worked really well in smooth paper coloring books. Uh, because they're so dry, they do tend to lay down quite a bit of, uh, of pigment with, without wearing down, oddly enough. So yeah, I did, I do recommend these. Um, but when I was doing this, I was just kind of getting used to them. So right now I'm going over with uh, kind of like this cherry red color, uh, just giving it a very light layer. So we've got the highlights that I kind of pressed into the paper. Then I went over with that yellow. And now I'm go then I went over with the red. And now I'm distinct, uh, making my shadows a little more distinct with the purpley Bordeaux color. This is kind of like a, like a burgundy color here. Um, I didn't use that many colors actually in this drawing. I did max out the reds and uh, the greens, but other than that, I mean, I used a little bit of yellow. I find the yellow really livens up the fruit. It almost acts, uh, gives it like a glow. So you don't want to skimp out on the colors. Now I'm using the white to blend my colors together. So that's another technique that, um, that might be new to you if you're new to color pencil, and that's using your white or another pastel color that's related to the other colors you're using to blend. 
Now, when I go over and I blend with this white, that white that I had underneath is going to show up a little bit more now because um, it's going to bring it out of the paper. It's going to kind of wipe off the stuff that was on top of it and let it shine. Now, you want to be careful blending with white on your shadow areas because it's going to make it a little more difficult to build those shadows up again. Now, you could be seeing a little bit of a glare. Um, I kind of went from working flat on my table to angling it up towards the end. So if you notice the colors get a lot brighter towards the end of the video, that's why. But also, um, we're going to use some solvent and that helps things brighten up a little bit too. Now, I like to work a color pencil piece all at once. Um, I know that's not the normal practice for a lot of color pencil artists, but I don't consider myself a color pencil artist. I work in mixed media or in watercolor mainly, uh, sometimes oils. So I approach this a little bit more like I would approach a watercolor. So I get my all over coloring done and then I'll go in and detail each section. Um, I like to do that because it kind of brings a whole painting together at once and that way I don't get bored after like doing one section and then be like oh I've got this whole other painting that I have to color now um, by kind of working it all at once it gets done all at once so um, so that way you're not gonna kind of you know flake out <laughs> at the beginning of the painting because you get frustrated with how long like one little section's taking because colored pencil does take a while this drawing took me an hour so just to give you a little perspective as you're watching this today so as I burnish, um, I am going in, we burnished once with a white, but now I'm going in and burnishing with color and burnishing, all that means is you're coloring firmly so that you're filling the tooth of the paper and it makes the colors richer. It makes them pop. It makes them um, appear more vibrant and more painterly, almost like an oil painting. Um, so if you see that, that word in a magazine or in an art, art instruction book or on the internet, you'll know what that means. So as I work um, around the edges, I'm going darker because then you would, the, 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 uh, the each little section there is kind of rounded so it's going to be lighter in the center kind of like a globe and as the sides tuck back it's going to be darker so that's why I'm doing that it's giving it a little bit of depth and just keep in mind that we're getting some glare from the wax and the pencils now um, there's another term that you, if you're new to colored pencil you might not have heard before or maybe you've heard and you don't know what it means um, but it's called bloom and it's um, it's the waxy haze that comes on top of colored pencils after you've burnished uh, so basically what happens is you've laid down so much color of wax based pencil that wax kind of um, builds up on the surface of your paper and gives this kind of hazy look. There's a couple ways you can get rid of that. You can gently wipe it with a soft rag or tissue. You can use a, a uh, solvent like I'm using here. You could use like alcohol or I prefer Gamzol, which is an odorless mineral spirits. And I put some in a marker here and uh, that's what I'm using. And what that does is it breaks down the wax and it removes any bloom. These pencils don't really have much of much bloom but if you use something like Prismacolor which is my favorite colored pencil um which is also not a common opinion amongst um you know amongst professional colored pencil artists probably won't use Prismacolor but um but I really like them but they bloom like crazy so you definitely have to kind of contend with that when you're done and another way to get rid of bloom is by spraying it with fixative that does tend to break up the wax and um and it goes away. But I, I would tend to kind of wipe it gently with a soft cloth. Just be careful not to smudge it like into your background, smudge any pigments. And then um, then I would give it a spray if, if I felt it needed it. Because sometimes when you wipe away the wax, it buffs it and it gets really shiny. And that's not really what you want either. So you can see that when I put this... Um, when I put my sketchbook up on, just raised it up on that little ashtray there, uh, it took, you could see the colors were much brighter. And now that pencil I just used was the aforementioned white Prismacolor colored pencil. I like it because I can add really bright highlights. And I had some leftover um, titanium white uh, from this company called Brush and Pencil. It makes this powder uh, white pigment and you can mix it with a, um, a thing called touch up texture, which is something you can add to your paintings if you need to color on top and your paper's not taking any more pigment. And you mix those two things together and you can add these really nice highlights and it just um, really makes the drawing come together. And I grabbed a Prismacolor black colored pencil to go in the nooks and crannies and grab and really get those dark shadows. So um, I definitely would recommend a black and white Prismacolor even if you don't want any other pencils in that range. And the reason why people have a problem with Prismacolor pencils, just to get this out there, is that they tend to break. They're an extremely soft core color pencil and um, so a lot of sharpeners especially dull if you have a, your pencil sharpeners that all dull if you rock it while you're sharpening it um, your lead's gonna break if you drop it it's definitely gonna break so uh, I use I keep them on my desk I use an electric sharpener I don't have problems doing it that way but um, but you know they are finicky and it just gives 
people a lot of grief and that's why that that's why people complain about prisma colors for the most part some colors aren't as light fast as other brands so that's another thing but then you're getting into like four dollars a pencil and that might be out of your budget especially if you're working in a sketchbook where it's not going to see a lot of light i'm puttering around with a few more highlights on the leaves um, the leaves aren't super bright especially the reference photo i have it was almost really dulled down colors and i had to uh um use brighter colors use my imagination that's why i'm not linking a reference photo because i think it would be do it's i went off base on the colors so much that i think it would not help be helpful um but i've painted raspberries before so i knew the colorway and i'm adding little uh, bits of green into the shadow too because green and red are opposites and these are translucent media so they will layer over each other and add darker shades now for my brightest highlights i am using a gel pen because the uh, actually that white paint the touch-up texture and titanium white i was using was old and i just added water to it so it wasn't as bright as um as it should have been and that technique is actually not recommended i asked my friend lisa over at lac refiner and she said yeah you don't want to add water to it after it's dried and use it because then it might flake off um but i you know i just wanted to try it because i like to try things to see if they work and uh i got my bright white highlights with my pen there and uh that's certainly easy and it gets the job done um it, you know the gel pen or paint pen could flake off so if you are really serious about your your picture lasting the touch-up te texture in titanium white is the way to go and i will link those down below so that you can find those if you're interested in them a uh, little will go a long way so it's probably a lifetime supply if you get one container of that now i am using a micron pen to add those little itty bitty um little i don't know if they're seeds they look like little antenna that come from raspberries you know the little fuzz on them and um i did just kind of go in there with the micron pen i added any lines that i felt needed strengthening and i just added a little bit of green to those little um antenna thingies to make them look a little more natural and there you have it hope you enjoyed the sketchbook sunday and i hope you find some time to do something artsy today too thanks for watching until next time happy crafting